I have Mr. John Thompson, National Technical Sales Director for FARD, and I have some technical questions for you. Fair enough. I want to get into this piece of plate here, and I want to clean it, but I don't want to do what, you know, normally I would get into this with, you know, what's the most common. I'd, I'd start out with a quarter-inch wheel that's zirconium. And I know from doing it all these years that, it, you know, when I try to remove mill scale, my abrasive just kind of loads up and it's just sitting here and it's just not doing anything. Well, the first thing I would do would be angle it up. Now I'm cutting and I don't want to cut into this. I want to maintain the surface integrity. I just want the mill scale off. Right. First of all, let's take a quick look at what the mill scale is. When they were making this material and it's hot, all the impurities come to the surface, and so there's 100% adhesion, okay? That, that scale is hanging on to all the little nooks and crannies and such that are here. Okay. So coming in with a regular grinding wheel like you do, when it first starts to take this from this kind of gray color to a shiny black, because you're really not getting it all off, mm -hmm. now frustration takes over. Yeah, and it does. the first thing you do <laughs> is start picking this thing up, and you're just going to get it I'm off. I'm going to bear down, too. But remember, you're running at 160 miles an hour. That's what this wheel is running at. It's your regular high speed grinder. Okay. And your control at that point to keep from digging too deep is gone. So what we do is we've actually sat down and said, what is it going to take to get rid of mill scale? And so let's start out with the wheel you would have had on the pegboard, okay. grabbing that wheel and saying, look, I'm going to make a push and we're going to take a look. Now it may, because it's brand new, sure. you may initially get some of the scale off, but I want you to take a look at the, the amount of scratches you're putting into the material. Okay. And remember, later on you're going to have to paint this and you want it to look halfway decent. Right. Okay. So let's do that. Okay. Wrong grain, wrong speed, wrong control. Let's see what happens. Okay, okay here's a perfect example. You see, First of all, you've got a really deep scratch, and this is a standard 24 grit, and it's a brand, it's new, brand wheel. new wheel. The other thing is you'll see how you're skipping because you're spending at least 40% of your time in the air. Well, yeah, I'm trying to keep a light pressure, but well, uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. And then I'd have to go back and clean that off, and then I'm just overlapping deep scratches with deep scratches and deep scratches. Exactly. Abrasives only remove. So in reality, all you're doing is taking more and more of your actual material thickness and stuff down, possibly even creating a weaker point if it's going to be a stress point later on. The other thing is you're not getting it all off. No, I'm not. Mil You've scale, got to get this all cleaned scale up. scale melts at a higher temperature than the Absolutely. clean base metal. And so another reason that I want it off. Of that's that. another reason. So let's go to a flap disc instead. Okay? okay, you're not going to bounce. You still buy these out at, at your you know local supplier. It's a flap disc. It doesn't bounce around as much as a hard wheel. Costs a lot more. Okay, we're just going to put this one on. Uh, same thing, mounts on the same as anything else, speed stays the same, you're still using it on your grinder. And we're going to come a little bit above on here, now this is actually rated at 40 grit, so we're not talking about anything real cosmetic, this was a 24 grit wheel, okay. so this is 40 grit, and that's about as coarse as most of the time you can find them, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's try that up Which here you, and see how you'd that's going to think would be pretty aggressive. Well, but you... I've, grabbed a, <laughs> I've grabbed one and I'm thinking, wow, this thing isn't cutting at all, it's just floating. So now let's take a look at what's happening. To me, to me, what it felt like as an Go operator, ahead. as an operator, I feel like I'm kind of floating out here. And when I pulled the grinder down toward me a little bit, I'm changing my angle, obviously. It's biting. I'm making overlapping gouge marks in here. I'm, I'm making waves. Right. And But look at also, you've gone from the gray color. Now you're going to a shinier black color. Mm -hmm. And you can see how it's so broken up. Mm -hmm. Here it's a very crisp edge, and here it's all broken up. Mm -hmm. The reason being, and you can see the disc already, has started to glaze up. Yeah. So it isn't going to take you long, all right, when you start to pull into this, because now the, the, the scale is down low. They've got to work to get that out. And, right. you, and, and that's where you start to... The, that's where the, my frustration level goes through the roof. Exactly. Because, again, I, and I'm looking at it over here in the light, and it's glazed. It's and, already and started so to glaze. And so when that stuff... Is it heat that's making it glaze up? Is it... I mean, I realize once it glazes up, it, to me, it's, all, it's, just, it's floating. I okay. don't feel anything. And so that's the... 
that's where you get hacked off and you start pushing <laughs> down and trying to make things work when they're not going to work. So what is, what is mill scale actually made of? It's made out of the impurities from the steel. It's made out of the excess coke that's in the material. It's made out of oils. It's made out of drawing materials. It's made out of all the things that got mixed in. You're heating them back up to about 1,800 degrees because that's the actual friction you're creating here. Mm -hmm. And what you're tending to do, especially on the oils and the debris, is all you're doing is starting to float them. And now you're floating them, and now you're floating them, and now you're floating them. I'm just and rearranging them. You're, all you're doing is moving them back and forth. Think about a coat of paint on a car, three, four coats of paint on a car. Mm -hmm. And you come in, you're going to grind all that off, and you literally liquefy it, and it lumps over here. And you push it back over here, and it lumps over here. And you're saying, what is going on? You've exceeded the temperature of the mill scale, and all you've done is starting to float it all over the place. And the madder you get, and the harder you press, the more you just float that all over the place. Yeah, you, and it's not fun. We've, we can't give you anything that you have to lean into, and we can't give you anything that's gonna build up a lot of heat and friction, which means you can't stay on it for any length of time. Okay. You can't play around with it. So what's some, what, what's a good solution here? What, what do you, what do you recommend here as far as a, the, the whole idea is that we have taken a look at the actual issue that you've had and we said it cannot be done with an impact grain. Okay. Impact grains are aluminum oxide, zirconia, ceramic. It okay. just can't be done. These grains are designed to bang on the material. You might want to turn that off. I'm already. going to, I'm thinking, about, yeah, it's rich, you worry too. We're in the middle of a film. I'm, 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 I'm 500 bucks on, on Lula Bell on the third. Okay, I'm fine. You're like, I'm okay you're right Jackie now. Chan no, in yeah, Rush Hour. Really? It's like, <laughs> who leaves their phone? Hey, on? yeah, but didn't he fire somebody? I don't know. Okay, I, I didn't think so. <laughs> anyway, so what we're going to do is instead, <clears throat> we're going to, we're going to completely change the grain you're using. Okay. Because we, Here's our constant. We know we have a lot of mill scale. We know we have a high speed grinder. We know we have an operator that does not enjoy it. You did not wake up this morning and say, I got to prep all this plate. Yeah. I am one happy, happy boy. We know we don't have that. So what we have to do is we have to make you happy. We can do it with either a grinding wheel. We, if, if you still want to go back to a grinding wheel, we can do it with a segmented flap disc. But what we're going to change, and you can see from the color even the difference, the zirconia is blue, and that's not, not natural, by the way. That's done that way. This is silicon carbide. This is designed, for instance, to work on stone, to work on masonry, to work on glass. And okay. the idea here is instead of being an impact grain, it's a pick. It literally comes in and picks this material off. So okay. you're going to make a pass, and you don't have to lean into it. And oh, by you not having to lean it, it's just going to finish. So you're not going to get all these wave marks. So let's put this one on. Still 40 grit. We haven't changed the grit size. We haven't changed anything else from here. Um, as soon as I started, I reduced my pressure a lot. <laughs> and I tried to lay this thing down as flat as I could. And I took off and walked across there pretty quick, really. But I, I literally, when I, as soon as I felt it, I reduced it. I wasn't pushing on it at all. So as a matter of fact, that, that was like floating on there. I thought I was going to... I thought I was going to miss like I was trying to do over here, trying not to scratch it. So looking at this, I haven't made those individual cuts. And exactly. So I'm just, like you said, you're picking it off of there. less effort. You're letting the speed of the grinder do the work. You don't have to get frustrated because wherever you point it, it's going to come off. Absolutely. And so, and the idea is that you're not building up as much friction because you're not pushing into the material. I mean, the same respects and stuff you'll see, because we looked at this, two of the three of these, and we said, mm -hmm. you know, one other point you brought up, it's really, really nice to get that mill scale off, but sometimes you grind further out than you need to weld, and then you have to later on, you're going to paint it, and you really don't want those marks to come Not up really and don't. show. And so we've reduced that somewhat. You can mm -hmm. see the real deep marks from the grinding wheel, right. the lighter ones from the zirconia, but still marks, mm -hmm. and this kind of sculpting. That, that right there, painted in the right light, it just, it looks like somebody went over and hammered it. Exactly. Beat up. But this is still flat. We're not, ha I don't have these bumps that look like I hammered the daylights out of it here from the 
every time that it came over here and cut. So this is better. It is. Now all that's great in reality for somebody and stuff that's doing small batches, that if people are doing some just some fab shop work or whatever. You mm -hmm. don't have to make any big changes or anything around here. But now you've got some commercial work. You've got to do a lot of these plates. You've got to do a lot of this work and such. It's going to be painted or powder coated. Cosmetics are going to be important. And you're saying to yourself, is there any way I can do this and get off the mill scale, but really control the amount of scratch to the point where I can, pre I can reduce later on post work? So what we did was we went back to the drawing board. And so what we did was we went back and we said, what's the biggest problem we still have here? And that's a directional scratch. Even mm -hmm. though it's lighter, it still has a direction that's going to show light unless you later on go and sand it or do some other work with it. Mm -hmm. So what we did is we manufactured a stainless steel wire brush and then we took that filament, that actual wire, and we sent it to our manufacturing facility and they actually grew what is called grew diamond on it. Stop it. So this is I can a, see that now that you turn it in the right light. So the whole idea, you, you see you can see that that almost half of the length of the wire actually has kind of a of a of a gritty appearance. Sure. That's pure industrial diamond. And we do that because we literally could take this and grow, take diamond segment, and it's called growing diamond on each one of these filaments. So now what I've done is I've taken an abrasive product, this time industrial diamond, and I put it into a format that you can come on to mill scale with and very effectively. And because these wires are all going to move, you're not going to have a directional pattern. Have directional. Now you're going to lean into this a little bit. It's not like a regular wire brush where you're just using the tips. You've got to kind of drag that diamond through. You've got to get so, into it some. Right, and up with about the same effort as you did here. You're okay. going to see it's not much. Now what you've got is you've got an area, you'll notice the mill scale's off. The machine isn't building up any kind of heat. The big area. It's doing a big swap at a time. You look like eating it off of there. And it just leaves you with a very light, non-directional real finish. That's strange. I mean, I, you know, when I, first of all, when I started the grinder, I didn't think it was on. <laughs> well. I mean, it just kind of went to nothing because of the super low RPM. And then I could actually feel, you know, when I got up here and just got the right angle so that this would flatten out somewhat. You could kind of feel it just kind of biting into this. And then when I pulled it back, that's amazing. And how about you used wire brushes in the past? How many wires you got sticking in you? I don't feel any, you know. Normally because... this big old fat thing here <laughs> catches all the wires and I get them stuck in my jeans. And that's amazing. The reason being is the wires are not running at so high a speed that in reality and stuff, they're allowed to do their work. Mm -hmm. And so you're just completely controlling that. This fascinates me. Uh, I see some huge benefits to this. The other thing is, because you haven't scratched the surface up so badly, for this grinding wheel or even this initial disc, because of all the effort you have to put in, to get it to paint, I have to do at least two more steps. Mm -hmm. With this, I can immediately go to the 150 grit non-woven disc and I'm ready to throw it to paint. Uh, I know this helped tremendously. I mean, this answered a lot of my questions that I've had over the years. I, I've tried various products. This to me is fascinating. I mean, there's a lot of our viewers that that ask us technical questions about abrasives on occasion, and I'm 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 like the technology and the science behind abrasives has always been fascinated by that. So you have answered a lot of my questions. Excellent. Thank you. Well, thank, thank you. you. I appreciate your time. This is very interesting, and I, I know a lot of viewers are gonna they're gonna benefit greatly by this. So, seriously, I'm, I mean, this is something that I've always been annoyed by mill scale, and this easy solution of just wiping this stuff right off here is pretty fascinating. Thanks for watching Weld.com. Make sure you check us out on Facebook and Instagram as well. He's unhappy. I got him in the booth. I got him right where I want him. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, not again. <laughs> <laughs> you should have okay. ran. You should have been able to run faster. That's, Look at me. I haven't I run since 1968, man, when the rubber bullets were on my ass. Don't start this, okay? <laughs> Do not start this. And I didn't send it in. That was a 19-inch color portable. All right, just tell us. It's John from Ferd, and, and, you know, and I'll just take my chances with the feds. Oh, I was still recording. What do you know? I, I used to... <laughs> Why are you turning red? I wasn't saying nothing. Hey, 